And I would rather us not talk about these emotions, but for us to act on these emotions. So how about me and you just getting it on? Now, I can't do this anymore. I, I can't. I can't. It, it just, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I've been doing this for like weeks now. And, and, and it's like... Hey, so I got a question for you. What's that? I have a YouTube channel and I just recorded that. Would it be okay if I shared that on my YouTube channel? That was amazing. <laughs> um, uh, I'm cool with that under one condition. Yes. Give me your Discord or YouTube channel. Yes, this is my YouTube channel. Cool. Building Bridges. That's it. An interesting name. So uh, what kind of content do you do? Yeah, well, I just uh, I talk to people <clears throat> from all over the world. I just do a Megal. I mean... I also talk to strangers in person, but I just ask people about their opinions, their standpoints on things, and uh, yeah, mm. love it. I love it. Yeah, just talking to strangers, pretty much. <coughs> Interesting. Yeah. Um, well, if you'd like, you can ask me these questions if, if yeah? you That's are amazing. interested. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, so where are you, where, like, what part of the world are you from? Are you in the U.S.? Uh yes, I'm from Texas. Cool. Dude, what are your what are your thoughts of Texas? Have you lived there your whole life? Uh I have lived here my whole life. And my thoughts on it, it sucks. <laughs> it um the I hate the weather. I hate a lot of the people. I hate how a lot of the work is either in the chemical plants or in restaurants. Um, and, uh, yeah, there's nothing here that I like. I'm actually currently in college and I plan on leaving the state and never coming back. <laughs> yeah, I feel that. Totally get that, dude. What, what are your, like, what are your interests? What, what do you see for yourself? <coughs> well, <coughs> um, uh, I'm in college for environmental health. So I plan on working for the EPA, um, but that's going to be a long ways from now. So prior to that, I plan on working as a code enforcement officer or a health inspector. Wow. Um, and then, yeah, go from there. I, um, I actually live in, in a RV, um, and once I'm out of college, I plan on trying to get a new RV. That's way nicer. And uh, do that because I don't have any kids. I'm not married. And I don't feel like paying 1200 a month for me to just live all by myself. And I, in my time in this RV, I really enjoy it. Because it's, yeah, it's really small, but it's mine. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's my space and, like, I can do, you know what I'm saying? I have a queen-size bed, two TVs. Uh, a restroom, a kitchen, a cat, a PlayStation Dude, 4. Sounds amazing. Sounds like everything you'd need. You know, like yeah. you've got school, you've got your space, you know, no one is bossing you around to do anything. You can do whatever you want. It's amazing. Well, I guess I'm, I'm really interested. Like, what was it? What do you think are the experiences that you had when you were younger that made you want to do environmental environmental health? Um... So, when I was younger, um, I was really interested in horticulture, uh, which mainly involves, you know, like, uh, mainly plants and stuff. Um, and then I uh, practiced with that for a while at home, and then I would do, like, a whole bunch of research and stuff. Um, I would actually go out to the country and help uh, my parents work on their land because they have a they have like 28 acres wow. um, and then I was like well I need to work now and then I started to work in restaurants and then I was like okay well I'm going to go to college for you know like trying to be like a head cook or something uh, and then I got 
really ill and everything kind of changed for me. And I was like, well, what else can I do? That's not hard. And then I was like, well, I could do the horticulture thing and areas in that department for work are very limited. <clears throat> and then I was like, well, what else can I do? And I realized that I liked to help the environment, which is one of the reasons why I liked uh, horticulture. Mm. And then I was like, well, I worked in restaurants my whole life, so I can go to school for environmental health, work as a health inspector for a bit, and move my way up eventually in school, and uh, possibly work for the Environmental Protection Agency. Wow. And uh, That's exciting. Uh, Dude, like, yeah, you have like a, it sounds like you have such a, like, you know, and trust the experiences that you and the things that you like, and there's like a, a future out there. For, like, that's, sounds like you're really grounded and, you know, that you also, something that I, I find on here a lot, like when I'm talking to people is that a lot of people like don't really know their self-worth or don't really value themselves it sounds like it sounds like you know what I mean like to treat yourself well to do what you like well um, surprisingly I wasn't always like this um, I actually used to be an addict um, and um, everything kind of changed from there and then I got a, a lot of uh, health problems and and like some really nasty health problems. Uh, right now, I'm actually in the process of trying to apply for a disability because I applied last year, went through the whole process, and now I have to try it again. Um, but um, so because of my health problems, I don't really know what's going to happen with my school and work, but. Either way, I'm going to try. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to not do anything with my life. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want to try, but with all of my health problems, it's just impossible. Like, there's no fucking way. Could you could you talk a little bit about your um, experience being an addict? Like, what got you into it and how you feel like you've recovered? Yeah, so... um Sorry, I'm grabbing my cat because she's playing with stuff. Oh. Yeah, she is the best. She oh. likes the belly rubs. Yeah, she's cool. Um, so, um, <coughs> um, being an addict, um, oh, uh, it sucked. Um, it was really fun, but in the end, it wasn't worth it at all. Um, I lost my closest friend um, shortly after I quit, and he was also doing it. Um, so, uh, let's see. Uh, we were doing it for about eight months, and then I quit doing it because I was in school at that time. I was in high school and um so i quit doing it for school and when i quit he kept on doing it and uh eventually he died oh. and um so that um encouraged me in like every aspect of my life to do more um which is weird because i learned more from him passing away than I did anything else in life. You know what I'm saying? Which is just the weirdest thing. Um, so the most that I can say on being an addict is it's really fun at first, but it never ends well. Like, um, you know, the whole culture is talking about this opioid epidemic and, um, like, what do you think influenced you to get involved in the first place? Like, how? Um, simply the people that I was hanging out with. Um, they were doing it. I said I wasn't going to do it. 
And no matter how much you say that you're not going to do it, if you hang around with those people long enough, most likely you're going to end up doing it. Crazy, right? Yeah, we become the people that we surround ourselves with. Yes. How do we, so how do we change, like as a culture, this is something that I'm really interested in. How as a culture do we just influence those people to not do that stuff? Is it, like how do we do that? <coughs> well, um, I'm going to have to go back to um, my college classes in ethics to, and use that kind of as a reference point. So um, humans are very complicated, right? I mean, we're the most, like, comp we're probably one of the most complicated living organisms to ever exist on Earth, maybe. And um, so there's no really clear answer for that. Um, I can give my personal opinion on how we could do that. Yeah, yeah I would love, is, to hear, uh, I'd love to hear your personal opinion. Uh, my personal opinion is that um, um, you can try, but not everyone's going to be on the boat um, because we're very complicated, and that's just not how we work. That, like, there's a reason why we've had wars. You know what I'm saying, like, there's a reason why we have problems in politics. You know, um, there's a reason why we still have a problem with people being racist, or you know. It's just you can't never get everybody on one boat. Um, I had a friend of mine tell me it kind of like this. When you're doing your own thing, imagine yourself as a stream of water. And every stream is eventually going to run in to some nasty water and um, eventually we're going to run into some nasty people and if you hang out in that water long enough uh, you're going to turn it into that water but it's kind of up to you to clean up your act aka the water you know what I'm saying yeah I get you <coughs> hmm. Wow, interesting, right? Where do you think you want to move after Texas? I think in Colorado. Yes. Um, I have been to Colorado one time, and it was amazing. Actually, the behind me is when I went to Colorado, and that place is amazing. Like, it is the prettiest place. Like, as soon as you're there, there's just mountains everywhere. Like, you, you hop out of the house, and there's a mountain, and you're like, oh, that's cool. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you don't get that here in Texas. Yeah, you were saying that, uh, like, the, well, I, you said that your parents had, um, you know, 28 acres of land. Do you think that, yeah. uh, will you miss being around them when leaving, or? Um, well, it's kind of hard to answer, because... They live about an hour and a half away from me, so I don't really see them a lot. So all I can say is that uh, I'll miss hanging out with them. But other than that, I mean. Yeah, you have to live your life and do the things that, you know, yeah. It sounds like you're a very strong person and you've learned a lot of things. You're, you know, wise, wise for your age, I can tell. But, well, well, so, yeah, go for it. Um, I don't know, man. Like, um, when you have enough health problems, because I'm only 20, or I just turned 25 years old, um, and uh, I have so many health problems, it's unreal. Like, and I'm 25. I have uh, PTSD, panic disorder, major depressive disorder, um, panic disorder, I think I already, yeah. 
Um, and I have personality. So what does all this stuff mean? Like for you, like when, when you're saying all of this stuff, like what, like there's a label to it, but it's, it's so hard to understand experience of it is just from those labels, you know, like for you, what is that experience like? What do you experience from these things? Well, for me personally, um, it's like climbing a mountain. Um, cause like I'm trying my best to get healthier. Um, but the problem with trying to get healthier from all of these things is that it's like climbing a mountain and the higher that you climb, the colder it gets. Uh. And eventually you get to certain points of the mountain where you're like, I think I'm almost there. And then you have a look down and you're like, wow, I've made a lot of progress. And then you keep going and you look over the ridge and there's another mountain. Like, oh. <laughs> oh no. Oh. Um, yeah. And it just keeps going and going and going and going until one day you reach the top. Some people don't get to that point because it just keeps going and going and going because some things can't be healed. Sorry. A lot of things can't be cured. You know what I'm saying? Like you can get healthier. Not everybody, but you can try. That's, but. Is what you're saying like there's no way to completely cure cure some of these things but learn how to live with them and to accept them and, and to deal with them? Is is it is is the thing? Yeah, um, you know, you can learn good uh, coping mm -hmm. thing because habits, yeah, yeah. And if you haven't noticed, I do have a speech impediment, uh, so that's also a huge problem. Like, yeah. Did sucks. not notice it. Did not notice it. Yeah. Well, um, so the cool thing is that with my stutter, um, I learned. Uh, about two years ago, that if you can hear yourself speak, then your speech is improved with this type of speech impediment. So my headphones, I can hear myself speak. So it improves how I speak. But if I was to take these off, my speech is terrible. Crazy, so right? So it's just a tool that you've used that, like, you were smart enough to incorporate into your life, habituate um, more fluid speech patterns. Yeah. And, oh, yeah, if you do happen to put this on YouTube. Oh, I definitely will. No. Um, I do want to tell people who have my speech impediment um a few tips because having a stutter is terrible especially when you're young it sucks um so if you can hear yourself speak um while you're talking it improves your speech there's actually an app that you can use with headphones and you can hear yourself speak um and you can delay it by like half a millisecond so that way it's really good um that helps out a whole lot another thing is to snap um when you can't say a word so if i was to say um penelope um that word is really hard but if i do that number for some reason, it's kind of like trying to hit the reset button, wow. um, and it's really weird, but it works. Um, because, you know, there's tons of videos online where people are like, I cured my stutter, and it's like, no, you didn't. Because if you did, you'd be a millionaire because, <laughs> oh, my cat is going to... my cat. <laughs> that, hey, cat that cute cat. That cute cat. Hey, hey, jerk! You wanna quit knocking over stuff, man? I'm trying to, I'm trying to have a combo, man. Um, but um, so 
tons of people online who are like, I cured my stutter. And it's like, no, you didn't. Because if you did, you'd be making so much money because then the government would know how to cure a stutter. And people would make millions. And people's lives would be severely improved. You can improve your speech impediment, and your speech impediment can go away over time, but that's not the case for everybody. Um, so those are my tips. Dude, that's I just what... have to tell you, like, I think, you know, it's interesting, you know, when we're younger, we have an, a definition of what a cool person is, you know, like the popular person, the person who's pretty, the 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 people who like get the girlfriends or boyfriends and who everyone just like wishes they looked like or whatever. Um, as time has evolved, like my definition of a cool person is someone who like knows themselves and who is aware of, of themselves and like has the strength and the courage to step into being uncomfortable and, and take things on. And by that definition, you are a really cool dude. And I just wanted to, to, you know, yeah, just well, that voice that, you know, very cool. It is much appreciated. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, mean, yeah. I mean, I try, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, we're humans, we're humans, we're fucking human. Um, but it is much appreciated. So, so for uh, these things, I usually also ask these kind of like random questions that I've written up. I have 48 of them. I'm not going to them all. Um, if you want to type in three numbers between 1 and 48, I'll give you those corresponding questions. 1 and 48. Mm -hmm. mm. Let's do... Um... that one and that one and that one do those I like how you went from big number to small that's cool <laughs> that's cool people don't do that people always go from from small to large but you go from large to small that's great <coughs> all right that's what that's what she said <laughs> I know. Very clever. 34 changed from five years ago. <laughs> um, how about change from five years ago? Um, five years ago, I was way more healthier, and now I'm not. Not very... Um, Uplifting, but that is the truth. Mm -hmm. Okay. Number six. Have you ever seen a dead body in person? Sorry, I had to laugh. I don't <laughs> know why. Like, I've just... It was so random. Um, I have, yes. It was at a funeral. If that counts. You know yes, 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 <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, these questions, these questions, like, get at something with people. It's like, they're random and deep, and people never ask them. You know? <laughs> right. Right? But that shows that we don't really ask ourselves those questions. How important, like, how would our minds change if we actually asked ourselves these questions all the time? Like, it's fucked. It's weird. Dude, I've been trying to tell people that for years. Like, it is so more profitable to ask yourself questions. But one of the problems that comes along with that is that, is that when people ask themselves questions, half of the time they're not even being honest with those questions. Mm. Are you, you mean they're not being honest about answering them? Is that what you mean? Yeah, like like uh, people will, like if people were to ask themselves a question, a lot of the times when they answer that question, they're not being honest and they're trying to play a game. Mm -hmm. You know, it's uh, kind of like procrastinating. 
but in a different way, if that makes sense. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. It's like procrastinating being truthful with yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, procrastinating confronting who you really are, you know, to, to, to kind of perpetuate an illusion of, of yourself, which isn't helpful. Right. Which isn't helpful. Yeah, it is definitely not. Wise. Okay. All right. Number two, last question. What is your relationship like with God? Hmm. Um, I don't believe in a God, like uh, the ones that we know so well that are written. Um, the best way that I can answer that is like this. <coughs> Who made politics? Humans. Who made currency? Humans. Who made religion? Humans. Do we really think that humans can be trusted on that aspect? Um, I don't think so, personally. Because I see religion and politics and currency as a tool um, for lots of things. A long time ago and even now. Religion has been a tool for war. It's been a tool for court. It's been a tool for politics. And it's been a tool for currency. When you pick up a coin, what does it say? In who we trust? In God. Uh, when you go to court, you put your hand on the book. And you say, I will tell all the truth and nothing but the truth in, in the name of who? in the name of God. Um, so, and, and then all the wars that have started because of religion, you know, I'm pretty sure that there was some dude who was like, we need to go do this and kill a whole bunch of people because our God is this and their God is that. And we want this type of God. You know, and I see religion as a tool. And um, now, that doesn't mean that what I'm saying is, you know, religion is a terrible thing. I think that religion can be a great thing. It can be a great tool. It can help out tons of people. Um, do I want to use that tool? No. I would rather use other things. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess I'll ask the follow-up question. What are the tools that you use that you trust at this point? Um, philosophy. That's my tool. I like it. I enjoy it. It helps me mentally. Helps me in life. Um, and... Uh, he just be how to, how to be more honest with myself and with others. <clears throat> and uh, that's what makes me happy. That's my tool. Well, this was, this has been this has been great. This has been really great. Um, your story and your thoughts have been a gift. Um, and uh, what what do you go? What is what should I put? What name should I put for this uh, for this video? Um, something involving my nickname. Um, everybody calls me Cabbage. Um, the reason for that being is because when I was in high school, I wore green a lot and I'm fat, so I look like a cabbage. As a matter of fact, my friend, <laughs> I see that. <laughs> I have a little cabbage guy. Look at him. <laughs> He, he is the best. So, something about Whoa. cabbages. I'm, 
Uh, yep, yeah, cool. I'll put cabbage. Great. Okay. All right. Well, before we go, cabbage, are there any last um, last thoughts that you have for the people watching? Mm -hmm. Or uh, I, I'm sorry, it was kind of hard to hear you because I was hitting my vape. Uh, yeah. Do you have any kind of any last thoughts that you'd like to share? Um, that you'd like to share? Yeah. Um, for those trying to climb a mountain, uh, it's going to get colder as you go. And it's going to suck. Um, but in the end, it might be worth it to just keep going. That is all. All right, dude. All right. Well, I'm, I'm going to upload the video uh, right now. Um, so it should be on in the next 10 to 15 minutes. Um, sure, man. And uh, so make sure to subscribe to the channel so you can see it pop up. And, um, yeah, thanks again. Thanks again for stopping and for serenading me for uh, – <laughs> You're seducing me. You seduced me into the video. <laughs> yeah. that, was, that was the first thing I did, wasn't it? it was, uh, yeah. Well, it was... Uh, it was perfect. It was great. <laughs> well, it was It was very nice to meet you, my good sir. And um, maybe next time um, we'll meet again. See you later, man.